Today we're taking a look at a brand that is located in Texas here in the United States. They're called Dufresne. I've actually featured a number of their watches here on my channel. Today we're taking a look at a new dive watch from the brand. It's called the Travis. Its design is a little bit familiar and a little bit different at the same time. So let's flip the camera and take a look at a new watch from Dufresne, the Travis Dive Watch. Dufresne watches are located here in the United States. They hand assemble their watches and regulate them here in the United States. I believe that all happens in Texas. This watch is actually regulated, hand regulated here in the United States to plus or minus eight seconds per day. And like I said, I believe that happens in Texas. I believe it's the owner that actually does it as well. This is called the Travis. It's a 200 meter dive watch that has a weird bezel on it. And I'm gonna go through that in just a few seconds. What they do is, and they've done this with a lot of their other watches, they use somewhat of a standard case and then they put an interesting bezel or an interesting dial and strap and they make the watch kind of look a little bit different. What this watch has is essentially a Tudor Black Bay 58 homage case. So when you're looking at the case, it looks like a Tudor Black Bay 58. You have slab sides, you have a big crown, there is a chamfered edge along the top, which is polished, and then you have polishing along the bracelet. That's all the polish that you get on this watch. You do have an oyster style bracelet that is primarily brushed. Like I said, the case does look like a Black Bay 58. The bezel here is very interesting. What you're getting is a black bezel that is glossy. It's glossy because it's made out of sapphire. So the bezel insert is a sapphire crystal. And then you have a sapphire crystal on the watch itself that has five layers of anti-reflective coating. Now, whether or not you like the bezel is completely up to you. It's kind of weird. It's a little bit sterile. There are some markings on it. Those are loom, but there aren't many markings. So there's not a lot of loom in that bezel. I'm not sure if I like it. I'm kind of on the fence about it. I don't know if it makes it look cheap or interesting. I'm very much on the fence. Tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. One thing I do like is the dial. The dial here is a layered dial. So it's a sandwich dial. Uh, and the way that they've done that is there is an outer ring that is basically a cut piece of stainless steel that sits on top of a black dial. And that acts as the minute track and the hour track. And that is loomed. So there's loomed portions on that sort of ring that goes around the dial. It looks really good. And uh, I believe the loom is pretty good on here as well. We will do a loom shot towards the end. Second hand is in orange. You have a counterbalance. I believe that is loomed. And then the hands are loomed as well. You have an arrow for the hour and then sort of a fence post sword hand for the minutes. Pretty cool. And then you have an applied Dufresne logo right there and also says Dufresne. As I mentioned, this is 200 meters of water resistance. So you do get a screening crown. That crown is signed with the Dufresne logo. And then you have a screening case back that has a star logo. And it has, of course, the uh, information on the watch, 200 meters, all that good stuff. I'll do close up so you can see what I'm talking about. The bracelet itself has quick release and of course, milled end links. They also put on the fly micro adjust into the milled buckle, which is great. Uh, it is priced pretty high. We'll talk about that in just a few seconds. It's a little bit difficult to use. So there is a button here. You have to press really hard and it goes in and out. And it's really kind of difficult to use unless you are pushing very, very hard. Uh, but it does work and it is there. So I'm not going to complain about that. Um, and I will throw it on my wrist so you can see what this watch looks like on my wrist. And we will do a loom shot towards the end. The price on here is $699. There are a few little issues with this watch that uh, make me think that this is a little bit too much for this watch and I'll talk about those right now. Number one, that bezel. So you're either gonna love it or hate it. That's not really the issue with it. The issue that I have found is it's really hard to grip. So unless you are gripping it from the sides here, you're not going to be able to turn this bezel. It is almost impossible. It is really hard for me to do. I have dry hands, that could be one of the reasons, but. I grip it from this side and I'm able to do it. It is tight. And I think it's a little too tight maybe. It lines up and it sounds great. It feels really good, just a little bit too tight in my opinion. And also, if you're gonna actually be using this for diving, 
obviously this bezel is not gonna really work. In fact, I don't think the dial will work either because technically I would call this a dress diver or a desk diver. So if you're looking for something serious, this is probably not the route to go. Uh, but I think most people don't use these watches for diving anyway. The other issue is of course, the ghost eight position. There is a ghost eight position on this Salida SW200. That is unfortunate. So that's the first position. You can see it does not hack. Then when you pull it all the way out, it does. There is no date here. I would have liked to uh, not have a ghost eight position. Uh, I think that would have been a lot better, but there you go. This could be because it's a prototype. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I will put something in the description or in the comments if this is a prototype and the production models do not have a ghost date. I will put that in the comment section. So definitely check that out if you're interested. Also, last thing is that micro adjust. A little bit difficult to use. Again, this could be because it is a prototype versus a production. Anyway, very quickly, let me throw it on my wrist and then we will do a quick loom shot. Today, I have another watch on that is sort of in line with this watch. This gets a Lejeune Pere movement in it. It is a Zelos and it also gets micro adjust. So the micro adjust on here is a lot easier to use. You just pull this tab here and you could pull in and out very, very easily. Um, a little bit different, a little bit different from this watch. Uh, I like the styling on the Zelos better in my opinion. Uh, this is not sized for my wrist and it's gonna be really hard for me to get on because it was sized for somebody else's wrist and I, I did not size it for mine, but you do get screwed links in here. So it is easy to size for your wrist. If you are concerned about that, it is pretty easy. There are small screws, but the screwed links uh, are easy to use. Uh, there it is on my seven and a half inch wrist. I actually did not do measurements. I will do measurements in just a second, but I believe it's around a 39 millimeter watch and that is at the bezel. I think the case is essentially 39 millimeters, but it looks really good on my seven and a half inch wrist. If you like that bezel, uh, this is definitely a cool watch. If you do not like that bezel, it's going to be hard to get past. So it's 38.5 millimeters at the bezel. It's a little bit smaller at the case thickness here. It is a 200 meter dive watch, 12.2 uh, millimeters. And then the crown 6.4 millimeters, nicely sized crown. You do have female end links even though the bracelet still does stick out just a little bit and 47 millimeters at the case at the bracelet, it is 48.9. So really not that bad. I have a seven and a half inch wrist. As I mentioned, this is a 39 millimeter watch essentially. And I think it wears like a 39 millimeter watch very quickly, a loom shot, and then we'll wrap up the video. There you go. It has very interesting loom. Like I said, those cutout portions on that outer ring on the dial, those are looms, so just the surrounds around those cutout areas are loomed, which is kind of interesting. The hands are loomed, that counterbalance is loomed, and there is loom in the bezel, but very, very little. That orange portion isn't loomed. I thought it was, that's not. Um, if it is, it's very faintly loomed. And then you have just a little bit of loom at the primary markers on that bezel. So that's a little bit disappointing, especially around $700. Uh, I would expect a little bit more loom in the bezel. This is a weird watch. Now you either like the design or you don't. Uh, it does have some quirkiness with the uh, buckle and of course that bezel, which is a little bit hard to turn. And then you do have that ghost state position. That ghost state position at $700, I think is something that would worry me if that is actually uh, the case. Again, I don't know because this is a prototype. So I like I said, I will put that in the comment section or the description below. Tell me what you think of this watch down in the comments section below. I want to hear from you guys. Tell me what you think of this watch. What do you think of Dufresne? Uh, obviously assembling hand, hand assembling their watches here in the United States, which is great. And of course, uh, regulating the watches in the United States, which is pretty cool as well. Tell me what you think down in the comment section below. Please also don't forget to like subscribe hit that bell icon. It is super helpful for the channel and I very much appreciate it. I'll catch you guys in the next video.